Hello and welcome again to the cab of my truck, my office. There's uh, snow coming off of that truck in front of me. miles ahead. Proceed ahead as name changes by 94 West Tri-State Tollway. I am not far outside of Chicago. Proceed ahead as name changes by 94 West Tri-State Tollway. Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Maybe I'll find some soda. No, I'm sorry, that's Minnesota. I know I can find some cheese. So, uh, at this point in time, I want to discuss there is coming a day. There is coming a day whatever day that means to you. It's up to you to figure it out. But there's coming a day for Christians, for believers, whether you believe in the rapture or not, if you are a truly converted believer in Jesus Christ, there is coming a day when you will be raptured. And uh, in that moment that we are raptured, like this old bag of bones, this, this earthly skin drops off and we are transformed. There's several reasons we have to be transformed. I'm going to come back to this. There's coming a day. When, there's, when believers will be raptured. There's coming a day when non-believers, scoffers, undecided, I'll wait until fill in the blank. There's coming a day when there will be no more believers on this earth. Your next door neighbor, family member, daughter, son, wife, husband, mother, father, uncle, aunt, somebody in your family who professes to be a believer. And you're not coming a day when that person will no longer be here. You will have no funeral service for them. You may have some sort of memorial, but there will be no body. There will be nothing remaining. There is coming a day when the people of the earth will get exactly what they want inhabitants of the earth will get their globalist um, government. They will get their Green New Deal. They will get their abortion on demand. They will get probably uh, the authority to uh, get rid of anybody they're just simply tired of existing. Maybe they're holding them back for some reason. Maybe they feel like they are. Maybe they feel like they're being encroached upon. Maybe they're just becoming a drain on their social life. So there's coming a day when you'll just be able to say, you know what? March that person off to the gas chamber. I'm tired of them existing. There's coming a day when you'll just be able to do whatever you want coming a day when there's going to be so much infighting because that's all the thieves and murderers and liars do. There's going to be so much infighting that you can't say or do anything without fear of offending somebody and thus being hauled into prison somewhere. Sounds like a whole lot of fun, right? Sounds
sounds like a whole lot of fun. Frankly, I'm glad I'll be up there. Somewhere, wherever heaven is, it isn't here on earth. Let me tell you something. This is what I heard. And it makes perfect sense. For those who are not believers, this, right now, this, is your best life. And it is as close to heaven as you will ever get. For those who are not believers, this is it. You've already resigned yourself to it. Don't get mad at me for agreeing with you. This is it. This is it. Oh, and then comes the judgment. Hebrews, I think it's 9. 25, 26, something like that. It is appointed unto man once to die then the judgment. So, there we have a natural law. It's a natural law. It was appointed unto man once to die. Once. It is appointed once. Every man must die one time. What does that mean? That means you're physically going to die. Um, you're physically going to die. So, think about that. Uh, and then the judgment. Well, what's that all about? I guess you just have to wait and see. But let me tell you. There's three judgments. There's the Bema Seat judgment. That is for believers. The Bema Seat is where we do give an accounting for our time. Atheists, anti-theists, no, Christians do not escape accountability, okay? We're still held accountable for our time. How did we redeem our time? The second judgment is going to be the separation of the sheep and goats. The third judgment is the white throne judgment for those who uh, are going to be cast lake of fire. So, um, which judgment are you going to be at? If you're not going to be at the Bema Seat judgment, then you really don't want to be at any of the other two. Um, and if you're, if you're in the second one, separation of the sheep and goats, you better hope you're one of the sheep. If you're not one of the sheep, then you really don't want to be there. And you sure don't want to be at the third. This is best if you think about what it is, what it could be. Do you want to take the chance? Discover what a relationship with Christ actually means. That yeah, means you have to take responsibility for yourself. It means you have to take responsibility for your own relationship with Christ and not rely on what your parents did. You grew up in a Christian house. That doesn't mean you're a Christian. You married a Christian wife. doesn't mean you're a Christian. Or a husband doesn't mean you're a Christian. Your children become Christians. doesn't mean you're a Christian. Your relationship with Christ is on an individual basis, period. Um, so there's coming a day when 
those who despise Christians will no longer have to deal with Christians. And in, in one of those days, one of these soon approaching days when the rapture occurs, there's going to be a lot of evangelicals, quote, evangelicals, thinking they're going to be first in line. And guess what? You're going to be sitting right there running for the caves alongside the disbelievers, the unbelievers, the atheists, anti-theists, agnostics, undecided, don't want to decide, going to wait till fill in the blanks. Haters. You're going to be right there alongside them. Um, so you really need to think about where you're, what is your destiny? Because there's coming a day, a reckoning, so to speak. It's coming. And for my brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters out there, Christians. See how things are getting all knotted up and it doesn't seem to matter which way you look. Things are getting knotted up. And it's hard to believe God is still in control. He is still at the helm. But I think there's a reason this is all getting knotted up, entangled. In. It's like you just start getting your head wrapped around one thing. Boom! Something else blows up right there in our faces keep us uneasy, keep us, those of us who are waiting, looking for the day that Jesus appears and that we are called to be up there with him like that, faster, we just gone. transformed to the likeness to the image of Christ. And I think we're still going to maintain a lot of our uniqueness. I think that further deepens the mysteries of God. We're going to be transformed to His image, but I think that we'll still have our unique um, traits, the things that have shaped us and made us into who and what we are as individuals who worship Jesus Christ, God Almighty. I have no reason to believe that our time is going to be boring, dull, because if your heart right now Say, oh, if I could just, if I, if I just didn't have to work, if I didn't have to do this, and I could just stay home and praise Jesus all day long, that would, that is one of the things you're going to get to do all the time. That is, you're going to be in the presence of your Creator, of, of your Savior, your King, all the time. What greater joy! The one who called us out of darkness, the one who called us to be one of His co-heirs. He just call us to be a brother or sister or, or, or one of his sheep or one of his, um, uh, you know, underlings. No. He called us to be co-heirs. I don't deserve it. I haven't done anything to deserve it. I didn't choose to um, just, well, I want to be a co-heir, so... You know, whatever I got to do. No, I didn't choose that either. I fully believe that in order to become a Christian, you do need to hear the calling. Is that phone ringing? You hear that phone ringing? If you don't hear that phone ringing, then this message probably isn't for you. You've denied the phone call for so long that you've decided that 
uh, it's not for you. Your heart has grown so cold. Besides, you're doing fine. You got what you need. You're doing fine. Why do you need God? What does it do a man to gain the world only to lose his soul? What does it gain? What what is what is the the benefit? It's all gonna go up in smoke anyway. When you die, what does it matter? What does it matter? Give me one good reason. Having all this stuff to lose your soul matters. It doesn't. Brothers and sisters, Christ, things are going to get even more knotted up. Things are going to get even more insane. Don't look for the Antichrist. It's not going to be revealed until after we're gone. Be warn of him. Watch out for the Antichrist. This is what he's going to do. This is what is going to happen. Read uh, Daniel, uh, several verses, chapters of Daniel, and read Revelation. Find out a lot about the Antichrist. The capital A Antichrist. But don't look for the Antichrist now. Rest assured, you're not going to find him. You're not going to be able to spot him. But those of you that are left remaining, that day that's coming, those of you that are left remaining, know this, there will come a day when one rules over the world, one, one person, and things may seem well at first, But uh, it's only going to last a short while. You're going to blame God for all these things. It's funny, you don't think there's one now. Right? But when all these things start happening, if you haven't read them, go read them. The seal judgments, bold judgments, and trumpet judgments. The book of Revelation. Go read about them. You're going to blame God for all these things. And, you, and then, you're going to know what? You're going to say, look, see? All this, all this, uh, uh, all these uh, climate catastrophes. Man-made catastrophes, etc., etc. You're going to be torn whether you blame God for them or you blame man for them. Many of you will probably blame man because that's what you've been indoctrinated to believe so that you don't have to believe in God or, or, or accuse God of something. There's several different scenarios but, that you're going to think of. There will come a point where you do believe God is up there and rather than turn to Him and ask for His forgiveness, you're just going to curse Him and shake Him. You're gonna hate him more than you do now. But you'll be getting your wish. Eternal separation from God. You don't want nothing with him to, nothing to do with him now? That'll just continue. You'll have nothing to do with him later on. Even when he's manifesting his sovereign authority, you will want nothing to do with him. You will curse him. Coming a day. There will come a 
the day, everybody is going to get what they want the most. Everybody is going to get what they want most in their heart. On that note, my brothers and sisters in Christ, have a blessed day. Everybody else, I pray that you hear that call. I pray that you repent and turn away. Have a new way of thinking about your destiny, about where you're going to be and what you really want. In one hand, there's an eternity in separation from God. In the other hand, there is an eternity in a relationship with God. It's, it's, that's it. And if you choose not to decide, you still have made a choice. That left hand is separated from God. There's only two choices.